I was asked, what do I miss about expat, well, UK life when I went to the Philippines? There's only a few things that really sort of bother me. The first one is conversation. Um, a lot of Philippines conversation is localized. A lot of, if you're coming from the UK, you're, you're coming from a smaller group because the majority of people that I've come across in the US, uh, in the Philippines are from the US. So you've got to bear that in mind. So their conversations are based on what they know, which often is completely different to yourselves, depending on what you're interested in. Um, food is actually improving significantly. Um, when I first went to the Philippines, you had to really look around because you'd get something like, say, hobnob biscuits, and then when they were gone, you wouldn't see them again for three or four months. That's how the Philippines used to be. But you're finding things like SNR has opened up. Um, they did have macro, but unfortunately, SM Mall bought it and turned it into another SM uh, shop using their own products it was nice to have a macro because it had some different things in it um, you pay more for electronics if you're from the US the reason I say that is because the UK is already a ripoff um, so you find that the prices are comparable to the UK uh, you find things like warranties are nowhere near as good as the UK because uh, obviously you've got the consumer protection and all that sort of stuff in the UK so you get normally at least a year in the Philippines you the, the shortest warranty I've seen is 24 hours. Um, it's pretty normal. I know in Hong Kong, you could buy something and walk away from the store and it would start working. And I was saying, it was working when you left the store. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nothing really major. It, communication is a big thing for me because I, I like talking with people. So you can become isolating a bit of a bubble, especially when people start taking tasks that you normally do yourself. Um, for example, I don't need to actually leave the house at all in the Philippines. My mother and father-in-law do most of the shopping bits and pieces like that. Um, we have a driver take the kids to school. Uh, all the laundry is done by a laundry woman. We have a helper for the store, so all the cleaning in the house is done. The kids have a nanny in the house, so you don't really need to be doing stuff um, on the chore side, but it's, sometimes it's nice to do that because it keeps you occupied. Um, so I end up doing a lot of other things. That's why I get involved in building projects and things to keep myself occupied because that's the biggest thing is keeping yourself busy. A lot of expats become drunks and argumentative online and whatever because they have a lack of things to do. So they focus on stuff, and it's in a negative capacity most of the time. Um, what, what I mean is when you get this arguing online sort of thing. But you'll find that if you get involved in doing some charity work and that sort of stuff, you're busy with it. Um, I've talked to somebody at the moment who's got some spare time and got some other issues that are ongoing, and I said, look, get involved with a local school or something. Just take your mind off it. Go and do something constructive, you know. You can keep yourself busy helping others. And also, it's a bit of a humbling experience, which becomes lifelong. It's a lifelong skill. It's a lifelong experience. Um, so it's beneficial. But the for the most things, I don't really get that bothered about it. It's literally just the communication thing for me. Like I said, the food's improved a lot. Um, it used to be pretty bland um, because you, you had to find food um, which means that you could be going to like four supermarkets looking for some, just something um, because everything else is so same same as I say <laughs> um, education system if your kids are going into the schools there personally I'd rather just send them to school in Europe um, which is why I'm in Europe but the I know there's some good schools in the Philippines but at the same time I look at the fact: Will they have? If the kids are going to stay there long term, fair enough. You know, and if they they got a EU passport or a US passport, they can go wherever they want anyway. But if they haven't, um, then bringing them to the West and getting all that 
bit done that is worthwhile. Um, because the last thing you want to see is your kids locked into um, being underpaid purely because they're Filipino. Um, and, I, and I'll say that quite bluntly, because let's face it, that's exactly what um, offshoring is. It's cheap labour. It's not, well, they're cheap and less skilled, because that's often not true. Um, you do get the problems when you do it en masse. You know, if you employ 10,000 people, you can't expect them all to be as good as um, the guys you've got in the UK that have been doing it for the last 20 years, because they have no experience. A lot of it in India, for example, is new graduates. And in the UK, even if you're a new graduate, it's very difficult to get seen as somebody serious till you're over 25, because they still see you as somebody that's unreliable. Um, so yeah, but beyond that, not really a problem. Yeah, I'll cover another topic after this one, which is an important one though. Um, but the corruption, in the Philippines, there is corruption everywhere. But I'll tell you now, in the UK, you're just signing the letters. They just send it through you, to you in the mail. Um, there's a lot of hidden taxes and things. It's the same thing. I don't, I don't care how the UK fluffs it up. They're just as corrupt, just in different ways, because they call it a surcharge or something else. It doesn't make it not corruption, because all it is is in the Philippines, it's just done slightly different express lane free a fee for example when there is no express lane but in the UK you get these hidden charges when they increase the uh, tax on insurance and stuff they don't really discuss it but you find your premiums improved, uh, increased because they've charged the tax companies uh, the insurance companies more money so you're paying for them taxing the insurance companies I can't tell the difference between that and corruption, can you? Anyway, thanks for watching.